message to gather unto you this morning. We thank you for your remnant across the world and all citizens of the various nations. We bring them under the shadow of the blood. We ask that you will have mercy and your name will be exalted. And the final lap of the gospel, Lord, you will enable the brethren from the Gentile nations to understand that the dispensation is closing out. And Lord, we bless you because we know you've answered our prayer. Have your way, O oh Lord, in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has been gracious to us in this study on constitution of the kingdom. I want to remind you, uh, by the grace of the Lord, I'm just going to cover phase A of the study. It's a huge study, 1,189 pages. And the course is available in the ebook constitution of the kingdom. You can pick it up. On the website www.kingdomboostclub.com. It's free of charge. Everything we do is free. And then we have also a YouTube channel. The name of the channel is True Kingdom Live. There are about 650 videos are loaded up for you. In this time of lockdown, instead of binge watching deadly things, poisonous things from all the spirit of the world that the enemy is unleashing upon the world, why not binge watch the exposition of the word of Elohim and build up your faith? For faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of Elohim. And so brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that the constitution of the kingdom is broken down into doctrines, just as you have articles in the constitution of a nation. So also in the kingdom, when you break down the whole truth into small, small parts, each of them specific to address a particular area of life. That's what doctrine is all about. And so, over the years, the, the uh, Christian religion actually worked against the purpose of Elohim. Instead of encouraging people to study the scriptures on the unction of the Holy Spirit prayerfully and receive the truth therein, they prefer to have counsels who decide, okay, this one, we need this one. That one, leave it. That one, people cannot take it. Uh, you know, so councils on human beings determine what people could take or not. So instead of just presenting the whole truth, parts were pre presented. So uh, that is how denominations came to be. Your denomination, you know, is actually a function of the revelation granted to a man, maybe 500 years ago, 400 years ago, 300 years ago. The problem is not that revelation. The problem is those who came to join the man, packing themselves at that revelation, in spite of everything the Lord will show, they said, no, this is the one we know. We are supposed to be open for the Lord to have his way and to bring revelation. Since we started teaching since 2006, there are some scriptures we are having better understanding of now than 2006. Or what of when we began to minister, you know, in 19... 89. There are many things now we know better than then. But why were the denomination? We packed ourselves in what our overseer saw and knew from the Lord, maybe 50 years ago. And so that is why today in the body, people are not identifying themselves as first kingdom citizens, first citizens of the kingdom. They are not identifying themselves first as members of the family of Elohim. They are not even identifying themselves as first redeemed of Yeshua. You see people, I'm a Pentecostal, I'm an evangelical, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Kojic, I'm an Assemblies of God, and all these things, because that's the programming. And with that programming, you cannot know the truth again. You can know a part of the truth and there's nothing wrong with knowing a part of the truth, but there's everything wrong in packing yourself there. It's like in the days of Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy. When, after he passed on and Joshua began to speak to them, even Moses himself said, you have dwelt too long. He said, you have dwelt too long on this mountain. You've just been running around this mountain. There are revelations that the Lord gave that he's expanding understanding of. Because as you grow in the Lord, the Lord begins to expand your understanding of him. As you grow in intimacy of him, he begins to show you the deeper intent of scriptures. So that what you used to know as literature before, you now begin to catch a revelation of it. And with that revelation, the mind of the Father becomes clearer. And brothers and sisters, the good news is this. The last lap of church history 
the Lord has already determined how he wants to bring the church to perfection. He has said it. In the book of Ephesians 5, 25 to 27, that it is through the washing of the water of the world. It will, just as water washes off things, makes them clean, so also the word washes off our mind. It takes off sentiments of things that are accumulated in our journey of life. Wash up things in our perception. And brothers and sisters, let's be open. So if you're a teacher of the word, you've been feeling that, oh, we are the small finger. Look at the apostles, the tongues that can touch everything. Look at the prophets that say, thus says the Lord, and they are prominent. Or even look at the evangelists with the healing anointing upon them. They gather crowd. They gather the biggest crowd. Oh, the teacher, the pastors, they are the ones that nurture the sheep. And then, oh, we teachers, where are we? Oh, we are little finger. The little finger. Your work is just about to open. Because with what has happened in the world, the shaking that has happened in the world, the Lord has shaken the church and the world. Now, the teaching ministry is going to explode. People want to know the truth from their father. They don't want that filtered by people who take what they want, called cherry picking. They want to know the truth that sets free, as Yeshua said in John chapter 8, verse 32. Amen and brethren, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 tells us now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of Elohim is, there's liberty. There'll be liberty for you to understand. And a child who is more open to the gospel can know far more than a parent who has lived in the gospel for 20 years. That child who is just five years in the gospel, if the heart is open, is going to understand the deeper dimension of truth. And so, men and brethren, there are two doctrines one will address today. Number one is the doctrine of unity, which was modeled by Elohim himself. If you look at Genesis chapter 1, 26, Elohim said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Look at that word. Let's make man in our hour. After our Elohim modeled it. And when man sinned, Genesis 3.22, Elohim said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and to do evil. So again, we see that place, us came up again. Elohim modeled it. And when humans were building the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11 verse 7, go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. Go to, let us go down. Men and brethren, you see that Elohim modeled plurality, unity, in plurality. And that's the concept of Elohim. The Elohim is the God that is us. It's a profound mystery. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In perfect alignment. In perfect union. No record of any disagreement on any matter in eternity past, in eternity present, in eternity to come. And that is why the Father also ordained that Human beings who were going to run this earth on his behalf, they needed to walk in unity in order to be the fullness of what he planned to be. When he said in verse 26, let us make man after our own image, we are told, Elohim made man in his own image, in the image of Elohim, created he him, male and female created he them. Then he gave them the mandate to be fruitful and multiply. He said male and female because he knew that it was in the estate of marriage that they'll be complete. And he speaks of plural, unity and plurality. Man, woman, one. Union. Men and brethren, that concept is what the Lord wants us to know. It's Elohim that said in Genesis 2, 18, it's not good for a man to be alone. I make him a help me for him. And that's why the Lord wants us to understand something. That whenever human beings discover the power of unity, they do great things. You saw that in the beginning of Tower of Babel. That, you know, they, they were one language. They were together. They decided to build a tower to heaven. Elohim recognized that, look, if these people are left alone, this tower will certainly be built. The human nature. When you have what you call synergy, you bring this force, bring this force, it releases a higher force. It is ingrained in the earth ring. And anywhere you see people walk in unity, walk with one heart, one mind, around one vision, accept a leader, there is nothing that can stop them. 
And so that's why uh, 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 Satan, knowing this, he walks over time to make sure that Christians don't walk in unity. So you see Christians, they are, they are united, they begin to achieve things. Somebody will have an idea. Oh, God wants me to do this. Interpret. And before you know it, the person begins to want to destroy that very thing for which the Lord gave relevance, for which the Lord brought him or her out. Oh, it's such a terrible thing. How people are using the name of the Lord in vain. In vain. People will be in an assembly where the fivefold is. You see somebody maybe, a person is maybe, uh, let's say, a, a, an apostle or a prophet or evangelist, a charismatic, and things happening. And then suddenly say, no, 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 no. I want my own. I want to make my, something for myself. He tears away. And where possible, grab some people with him. What that brother doesn't know, what that sister doesn't know is that he's lacerating the body of Yeshua. You are fighting Yeshua. And, you, and to what some matters, you are using the name of Elohim. You are not afraid of Holy Spirit to say, Holy Spirit told you to destroy a fivefold walk because you want to pursue your ambition. And this is what has happened all over the world. The fivefold is not coherent. It's not working out because ambitions of people make them, they don't want to stay into a part. They don't want to be part. They want to be their own whole. They want to have their own, my own church, my own ministry, my own organization. And that is terrible. Brothers and sisters, if people knew what they are doing, they wouldn't do it. It's just that people don't know. You know, Paul talked about to the Corinthians how the God of this world has blinded the eyes. There are many believers who are blinded. If you know the Bible, there are things you won't do. If you know the mind of Elohim, there are things you will not do. And so, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you, if you be in the household of faith and you are tearing apart a work the Lord is doing, it doesn't matter whether it's America, whether it's Asia, Africa, Europe, anywhere in the world, and you are not bringing your gift and calling, humbly submit to yourself to be part of a whole. You want your own, call by your name. So you know you are the CEO, you are the visionary. That spirit to rule in you is not the spirit of Elohim. Is it that the Lord will not call people out? He will. And when he calls, he calls to go and build even a refinement of where it was before. Not to take it down. And brothers and sisters, I wish the Lord would make you understand that there are 12 environmental issues which make unity possible and productive. Number one, when saints are truly brought together into an endeavor by Elohim, not the flesh. Not the flesh, not emotion. Elohim brought you to an endeavor. Then that's a good basis. Number two, when the vision is about his kingdom, not human beings, not empires. Number three, when all saints submit in their heart to the sovereign rule of Yeshua and are involved because of his kingdom, which they are first seeking. They are seeking his kingdom. They are not seeking self. They are not seeking self-knowledge, self-projection. And in these days, men and brothers, listen to me. The very social media the Lord has provided for the kingdom is going to be the thing that will take many people to hell before on, on outside of Elohim's plan because the same social media that's an instrument of doing the work of Elohim is also the same platform to feed human ambitions, to make people feel they want their own, they want their own, they want their own. And while it is okay, like Paul teaches us in Philippians 1, if you're a leader, Anybody, all the people in the ministry with you, let everyone prophesy, let everyone preach, preach, teach, let everyone do exploits. Praise the Lord for it. But Paul says some preach of envy, some of contention, some preach sincerely. Some want to add to his bond. So we are going to see these things these days and look at today. On social media, everyone is flogging, flogging, flogging. At times unstructured, at times without content, at times making the whole thing of non-effect people gamble up the message. Why wouldn't somebody learn enough to be able to know how to put the word of the Lord in a cogent sense that can be a blessing to people? You know what? Go to YouTube today. Go to Facebook. Go to Zoom. Go to that. Even ministries. Why wouldn't a pastor be humble to ask another pastor who has achieved some level of competence? Why wouldn't somebody in the U.S. 
Ask Pastor Jeremiah Shepherd, Prophet Jeremiah Shepherd, and say, please, how did you structure this? How do you do it so that I can be able to have the people together? Why wouldn't somebody be humble enough to ask that question? You know what? The spirit of disunity is so terrible, you may not even recognize it. So, number four, when saints heartily align with the vision holder, Elohim ordained. Elohim is the one that ordains leadership. No man take this on unto himself, except he who is called of Elohim. There are three types of churches on earth, three types of ministries. Number one, ministries that are given by Elohim. When they give it to you, there's no strife. As a matter of fact, all through scriptures, you don't grab it, you don't seek it, you don't want to rest it. He puts it on you. No man take this on. Then number two, there are ministries that are product of flesh, ambition, works of flesh, struggle, want to be seen, want to be, oh, those people are more prominent, I have more than them. Oh, 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 oh. You don't believe that the Father has a plan for your life, you don't believe that he's working it on, and you don't believe there's a day of manifestation, you want to go there before him. So self-made ministries are ministries as a function of ambition. And somebody is looking for prominence or looking for money or looking for fame or whatever it is, then there's satanic giving ministries where Satan wants to use to take somebody to hell because the shortest distance to hell is the Christian pulpit. If you preach any truth, you don't have a desire, an inclination to seek the Lord's fulfillment in your life, you're simply on a highway to hell. And so Satan is building ministries today, flesh is building ministries, and Yeshua is building ministries, and the difference is going to be clear with time. As time is in eternity, then you see the difference. So, if Elohim has ordained a, a, mean, a leader, you align with the leader. And if you align, when the time comes for Elohim to take you to another level, you don't need to use flesh. He will work it out. Then number five, when saints mature to discern the voice of the enemy, as well as those of disgruntled people who, having an axe to grin with a vision holder, will stop at nothing to destroy the fellowship. There are people who do it. They have a problem. Somebody once sent me an inbox about uh, somebody I knew, a man, of, a, a man of God I respect and honor. You know, somebody sent da, 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 is da, 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 da. I just sent him a note. What is your evidence? Till today, no response. Till today, this thing you are saying, where is your evidence? What I want to do is to bring some people into consideration of that. Brothers and sisters, be careful how you listen to people who are disgruntled, especially if they are in a ministry, you and the leader have a relationship. Be careful. Be careful lest you take a course upon yourself. Brothers and sisters, things are not the way they appear. The disgruntled people will seek to destroy your relationship with people who the Lord has put in your life. Number 10, number 6 rather, when those involved in a vision understand what part is assigned to them and joyfully accept that part and give themselves wholly over to the business of occupying the allotments. You see, there's a part given to any man, every man in a vision. If you take it joyfully, and give your best to it, seeking no agenda of prominence or displacement of the vision holder. The honest truth is that the Lord who sees your heart is going to make everything work out for you in your own time. Number seven, as saints occupy their assigned spaces, they willingly keep rank and ally with Elohim, the vision holder, and each other. You see, Keeping rank is so important. First Chronicles 12, 38. All these men of war, the people that restored the kingdom to David, he called them men of war that could keep rank. They came with a perfect heart to Hebron to make David king over all Israel. The rest of Israel, the rest of their brethren were their commandment. Now, let me tell you what it means. If, for instance, let's say in the ministry, the Lord, it has pleased the Lord that Pastor Grace and I are overseers of, let's say, this mobilization of intercessors to pray across the world, and you say you believe in us as vision holder, you respect us, then Prophet Uloma, who the Lord has put there as the director of the effort, you disregard her, you disobey her, you disrespect her. No, you are not keeping rank. 
Because she is a delegated authority given an assignment, and that applies to everybody. The pastoral care team applies to all the evangelism team. Everything, there is an order of Elohim where he planted you. Don't seek to make yourself known. Don't seek to displace anybody. Do what is assigned to you. He who sees in secret will reward you openly. You must have confidence in his ability. Otherwise, you are claiming that Elohim is blind. Men and brethren, number, number eight. Yeah, number eight. When every part of the kingdom mission is functionally relevant, every joint supplies, and no one is a freeloader to live off others in any way. That's what we're told in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. By what every joint supplies, the body makes increase of itself in love. It will take sacrifice by all of us. I mean, take a typical broadcast here. Arise, we'll take my shirt. I own it, you know, uh, um, uh, because the right is doing some exam topics. And we said to leave him alone. Destiny ran down, left his uh, studies for today, set up the camera, and then praise came down. Make sure I got tissue, all those things. It's a teamwork. That's how we do. That's how we do. And that's how local assemblies are. When you take the part assigned to you and do it as unto the Lord, by what every joy supplies, the body makes increase of his self in love. Number nine, when the spirit of unity will enable saints to recognize that in spite of their various estates in life, Elohim put us together to collectively express his glory. That's what we are. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am right there. When we do things properly in alignment, that's why Satan hates unity and will do everything to tear apart unity. Number 10, when saints deliberately look out for and support those who are disadvantaged, weak, or infirm as a duty of care on behalf of our Father in heaven, we ought to, even at this time, look out for the brethren. Listen, one of the arms of this commission, the Global Mission Board, as I'm speaking with you now, over 30 orphanages and widowhood organizations and widows and orphans that are part of our responsibility in UK and USA. They've been provided for including people on the front line, people in the persecuted church, over 30. And right now, the countries that they are part of is about 20. About 20. That, that is a small ministry. Can you imagine if these bigger ministries would do the much they can? And so unity makes it possible because that brother brings 20 pounds, that one brings 30 pounds, that one brings 50 pounds, that one brings $10, I mean $30, that one brings $50. It's possible to do these things. And the people who are assigned to do them are able to do them and just give us report. Number 11, kingdom unity becomes a reality when sense recognize that there's no other way. And then number 12, when saints consciously avoid competition, strive over who is greater. In that case, they simply complement each other. So we don't do what happened in the days of Yeshua in Matthew 20, 20, 28, when the sons of Zebedee brought their mom to come and lobby for them. Those things are not part of us. Brothers and sisters, it's so important. So there's a five-fold power of unity the Lord wants us to tap into. Number one, unity unleashes strength through synergy. You bring my, your strength, I bring my strength, we bring our strength, we is greater than I and me and you. We, we are better together. Number two, unity makes prayer a rich experience of co-ruling the earth ring with Elohim as saints become midwives of the will of the Father in the earth ring. Again, I saw unto you, Matthew 18, 19, that if two of you shall agree on earth, touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be given to them of my Father which is in heaven. Number three, unity unleashes the divine presence. Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am right there. Once you have unity, there's presence of Elohim. Whether between a couple or between a couple and their children or between a local assembly or whatever, where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there. Number four, unity is a sure proof that Yeshua is truly head of the church. The sure proof. Immediately there is unity. The head is honored. That's what he said in John 17, 21. That they may all be one as that Father in me and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world will believe that thou hast sent me. And number five, through unity, usher says, into the divine realm, 
where they are clothed in his glory. When there is unity, the glory of the Lord begins to cover upon the group of people. The assignment for this uh, lesson 22, write out the summary of the doctrine of unity as you understand this lesson. What did you understand? Two, mention at least six of the 12 environmental issues which enable unity to be fostered among saints. Three, mention at least three of the five uh, full power of unity. Having said that, let's quickly go to lesson 23, the doctrine of faith, which is lesson 14, the doctrine of faith. Brothers and sisters, throughout the Bible, this doctrine is there. Some people think it's a New Testament construct. No, faith is not a New Testament construct. Remember Abraham. Abraham walked with Elohim by faith. How did Noah walk with Elohim by faith? Noah had never seen a flood before. He had never seen an ark before. When Elohim told him, he saw what Elohim showed him. He began to build it. Why? The definition of faith, remember it. Faith, Hebrews 11, 1, is the substance of things hoped for. You see, this is substance. Something you are hoping for. Something that is not yet seen, you can literally hold it in your spirit, man. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. You've not seen it physically, but you have sure evidence. You know that you know that this thing is real. Then from that definition, we can see that faith occurs when someone can grasp the reality of something that has not yet been seen or can, and counts it down. You count it a done deal. Elohim said it. You believe it. That settles it. That's why Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Impossible. Capital impossible. You can't please him without faith. For he that cometh to Elohim must believe that he is, as the word of them that did they seek him. So we need to understand that faith is a universal doctrine. It was there before the law. It was there during the law. It was there, men and brethren. How did, how did Moses walk with Elohim? Exodus chapter 19 and all scriptures. He walked with him by faith. He believed in Elohim who revealed himself to him. He communicated with him. He said, come, you go to the mountain. Why wouldn't he say, lion will kill me. Leopard will kill me. He was sure. In fact, he loved the presence of Elohim. He told Elohim, if your presence does not go with us, we're going nowhere. Brothers and sisters, how did the people walk with Elohim? Elohim. Remember in the book of Samuel, when Samuel went to look for a, a king in the house of, of Jesse, he went, you know, and he was kind of looking. They looked at all the generals. They threw at Elohim, he says, not him. Then Elohim told him, Samuel, man tends to look with the eyes, but I see in the inside. And so the boy who was forgotten in the desert, David, was the one. Elohim taught him a valuable lesson. And so, brothers and sisters, it is so important that we understand that in Yeshua, faith was restored as a tool for connecting and working with Yahweh. Why? Because when religion came and Moses gave them the law, before you knew it, the people gathered around those carnal ordinances. Those carnal ordinances became more important to them than the essence, the very heart of Elohim, what he wanted, just like everything he gave. They began to give funny, funny interpretations. And before you knew it, the law that was meant for good became dead. It became a veil covering the eyes of Israel. So people would do a lot of things inside a building on certain holy days. And outside they would be unclean. And then they will go back to the temple, pay the priest, buy a sheep or goats and give to them to sacrifice for them. Men and brethren, that carnality, that's what one of the reasons Elohim sent Yeshua to be manifested in the earth realm. And you know the interesting thing? Because of the veil of Moses, when people saw that baby in the manger, for them, how can, how can Elohim be this baby? They rejected him. Is that not his father Joseph? Is that not his mother Mary? Is that not his brothers Joseph, James, Jude? Are they not his sisters amongst us? They were carnal. They were looking at him as a man. They couldn't see. It took someone like John to see that the word was manifested amongst us, was made flesh, and the word was Elohim. It took people like Peter to get that revelation and say, you are Yeshua, the 
the son of the living Elohim. You are the Messiah. It took faith to get that. And so faith became a thing the Lord taught. How do we get saved? By faith. Romans chapter 10, from verse 8. But what saith it? The word is near you, even in thy mouth, that is in, in thy heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Yeshua, and shalt believe in your heart that the Elohim are risen from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, when a mad confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. This is the word of the Lord. Whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. So faith is there. It's by faith we are saved. As Ephesians 2 says, faith leads to salvation. So if we go to talk about the scope of faith, let's talk about the scope of faith. Let's try to outline them. Number one, Faith secures a relationship with Elohim. It is through faith we draw down, we cast our sins upon him, and we draw his righteousness into ourselves. That's what it is. And faith is such a powerful tool. Two, faith is the instrument of continuing our relationship with him. If you start by faith, <clears throat> Make sure you don't end in the flesh, carnally, wanting to judge things by what you see, or what you hear, what you feel, what you taste. Continue that journey of faith you started. Continue in it, because there shall be a performance of that which you have believed the Father for, as he told you. Number three, is by faith we obtain the blessings which come from Elohim, not works of flesh. It's by faith. You know, even in healing the blind person, Yeshua told in Matthew chapter 9, 29, he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. Then in verse 17, 20, when they were doubting, why couldn't we cast out the demon in that baby? He said, Yeshua told them, because of your unbelief. But very I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, be thou removed to yonder place, it shall be unto you. Nothing shall be impossible with you. This is our king telling us. He wants us to continue by faith. Everything the Lord has told you is by faith. Forget about what is happening in the world. It doesn't change the plan of Elohim. He can prosper you more now than when things were even okay in quotes. Number four, he wants us to overcome trouble and adverse situations and issues of life by faith. That's how we overcome. By faith. You can leap over walls. By faith, you can run through troops. And that's what happened to Rahab. They come on a lot of Jericho. By faith, she saw those men. These men are not ordinary. The Lord has given them the land. He, she hid them. And that's how Joshua told them, when you go into Jericho, first thing first, go and secure the life of that lady with her family. So by faith, she made it. And it was recorded in the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Men and brethren is so important. Number five, it's by faith that we secure a place. We secure a place with Elohim in the world to come. It's by faith. Who has seen heaven? No one. But how do we know it's real? By faith. How do we make choices today? When the opportunity to sin against Elohim, opportunity to do evil, opportunity to imagine evil, negative things in your heart, plot it and do it. When you remember that he could, the trumpet could come any moment and you don't want to be found on the wrong side of that uh, trumpet, by faith you keep yourself pure and tap into the grace of Elohim for the world to come. My friend and brethren, number six, it is by faith we understand creation and the past. How do we know the world was created by Elohim? It's by faith. Hebrews 11.3 Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Elohim so that the things which were seen and were not made of the things which do appear. It's by faith we know. It's by faith we know that Yeshua came to this earth. It's by faith we know he went to the cross. It's by faith we know he resurrected. You see, our faith is based on faith. The moment you take away faith, we are resting on a very weak foundation. Number seven is by faith we see the future and make wise choices in everything we do. There are a lot of people who have missed the plan of Father for them because they went carnal and tried to do something for themselves. They missed their place. And history is filled with people who just missed their place by just a few 
days or weeks or months. They were so busy trying to make a name for themselves, they missed it. How did Moses reject to be called the son of Pharaoh, according to Hebrews 11? Because by faith he saw, look, there's a better destiny with Elohim. Number nine, I mean number eight, we win natural wars by faith. Men and brethren, we win natural wars, even in the natural. Like this battle right now going on, by faith, we know we have overcome. By faith, we know that May 31, we're going to have a global Thanksgiving service. By faith, we know that none of us will be lost. Not one will be lost. By faith. Number nine, we endure pain and overcome adversity by faith. Whether it's physical pain, psychological pain, pain, oppression, whatever it is, lack, whatever, we can endure, we can overcome by faith. It's like a pole vault. You pole vault above those situations. That's what Hebrews chapter 11, 35 to 33 tells us. Number 10, we win spiritual warfare by faith. That's why I say take the shield of faith. With that shield of faith, you quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. All the arrows the enemy is throwing by faith, you quench them. Brothers and sisters, it is so important that we understand the dynamics of faith. The dynamics of faith is number one, you believe in your heart that with Elohim all things are possible. Just as you believe and became saved, also believe him that with him all things are possible. So when you face pressure, where things look like no other way, go by the way of faith. Number two, apprehend in your heart all the things Elohim promised in his word which is needful for your joy to be full. Remember in John 16, Yeshua himself told us, ask and receive that your joy may be full. So what are the things he has spoken to you about prophetically or in his word? Apprehend them, stand upon them, no matter what you see. Number three, develop the attitude of expectation and refuse to be ruled by a report of your five senses. Expectation is the mother of manifestation. You expect, you receive. And that expectation, when it's based on what he said to you, the rema he gave to you, the prophecy he gave to you, his word which is quickening your spirit, man, it may take time, but it will surely manifest. Number four, confess with your tongue what the Lord promised you and your loved ones. Speak only what he promised you. Speak it constantly. Affirm it to one another. Even in this situation, according to the book of Malachi, they that love the Lord, they speak of the one to another. The Lord had it. He opened a book of remembrance for them who love the Lord and speak of him to one another. And number five, resist steadfastly the faith. <clears throat> Whatever Satan or the flesh suggests, symptoms, not for you. Don't confess it. Don't internalize it. Don't absorb it. Because those symptoms are suggestions of Satan. He's waiting for you to give me a legal license, as I said the other day, because if you now agree with him that that, suggest, that symptom is real, you have simply rubber stamped for him to execute against you. That's why we've got to learn how to push back. Don't confess those things your flesh is suggesting. Even doctors, if you go tell doctor, I got, uh, I got uh, uh, whatever you call that condition. Doctor, if he's in Africa, they will tell you to shut up. That's what they will do. How do you know? Why? You're supposed to just tell them the symptom, allow them to interpret. So why are you allowing your mouth to confess what Satan is trying to suggest against you? We've got to learn how to push back. Men and brethren, we need to trust the Lord. And again, the dynamics of faith, number six, walk by the faith walk in everyday life. We're told in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we walk by faith, not by sight. In your kitchen, walk by faith. Pastor Grace used to say something to the, to the ladies in the fellowship. How? Even the refrigerator, the deep freezer, how she literally expects it to produce something for us to eat. Even in times when it looks like there's nothing. And that's been the honest truth. That's been our experience. Day to day. Employ faith in every situation, your health, your wealth, your resources, everything, even your ability to stand and make up course correction. And number seven, 
Feed your spirit man with the word continually because we are told in the book of Romans chapter 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of truth. Final word, men and brethren. Hebrews 10 says in verse 35 to 38, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of Elohim, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Don't draw back, brother. Don't draw back, sister. It's just a little while. Before you do anything, I used to tell people, don't make a long-term decision in a moment of emotional turmoil. That local assembly where you are part of, maybe the pastor is younger than you. You, you have a, a PhD. He, he just had high school education. But that's where the Lord placed you. If you now just want to, because you are, you are more educated than him, you tear yourself away. Have you thought about the implication for your wife or your husband or your children? Who the Lord is building up there? Is it because of the ambition you tear apart? You tear apart what the Lord has provided? Oh, young man, young woman, you are single and you have two children. And then with these two children, what are they seeing you do? Are you doing things of your flesh? And you don't care the impact of it on their psyche, seeing their mom or their dad messing up. Are you not checking it? If you have faith in their destiny, you're not going to do that. And so I want to say this to you, men and brethren. We have a better opportunity than those before us. Because in Hebrews eleven twenty nine 29 to 40, we are told, These all, all the heroes of faith, having obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. Why? For Elohim has provided something better for us. That they without us should not be made perfect. The book of Hebrews 11 is an open book. If you check it, it didn't stop. You know why? Your name will enter that chronicle. Your name is a candidate for that chronicle. And I want to say this to you. The Lord has ordained it so. Just cooperate with the Spirit. And so shall it be. So assignment today, please expand, number one, expound the doctrine of faith, showing how it transcends both the Old and New Testament. Two, kindly state five key truths which minister greatly that you are holding on to from this teaching today. And I want to thank the Lord for you and I want to encourage you, please, brother and sister, let's take this thing seriously. Elohim knows why he's raising them. And just allow him to build you up. Stop doing things carnally. A good idea is not a God idea. It may be good, it may not be godly. And anything you do out of flesh, out of strife, out of to be known, it will crumble. Elohim is not with it. So we're going to pray now and I'll make some announcements. After I pray, I'll make announcements. Father, we'll bless you for what you've done. Let your name be glorified. There is no other Elohim besides you. Just have your way and take this truth and deposit it in the heart of your people and bless your people with revelation. Let them make the necessary adjustments. Those who need to repent, let them repent for carnality and restore them in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. And brothers and sisters, let's take some announcements today. One of them, our sister Carl K of uh, Zambia, I think she's in New Zealand, she's in the master class, the, the yes course of the master class, she does her bad day, and her brother, Apostle Mark Morris John Anumunu, uh, he's in Cote d'Ivoire, uh, Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire, today is his bad day, our sister, Patience, our four, today is her bad day, our brother, Apostle Habakkuk Powell, uh, in Liberia, today is his bad day, and our sister, in Jolie Monique, the bad day is today, our sister, Venon Simon, today's bad day, and her sister Kimberly Curry Robinson, and Pastor Sarah Nadi. Pastor Sarah is here in London. Her bad day is today. Her brother Alan Joe Poku is today's bad day, and her brother Philip Maxwell, who was one of those who did the masters at the Global School of Ministry, is in London. Today's bad day. Her sister Jeanita Hatcher, and her sister Apostle Deborah Fleming of Iowa. Today's a bad day, and Alexis Love and Ellie Moluhan. 
Today is a bad day. Wonderful. A large crowd today. Thank you so much. We're going to pray for them on the line. Destiny, thank you so much.